Shalom, so glad to see you again. Today I want to share some thoughts on how biblical forgiveness can change us. Psalm 32, 1 to 2 says, How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Forgiveness is one of those tricky words that Christians use differently from the rest of the world. The problem here is that when people hear them, they think they know the meaning even of their understanding of forgiveness, which is probably far away from the biblical idea. The word seems simple enough. But most people in our society do not think of forgiveness in biblical terms, especially in the context of God forgives me. Most people tend to combine forgiving with excusing or ignoring someone which is not a good combination. Psalms 32 gives us a litmus test for true forgiveness which show us how distinct and different it is from all competing ideas. According to the psalmist, those who find forgiveness are changed by it. Psalms 32 verse 1 to 2 says, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Once we are truly forgiven, we find two things happening. We find that our love for God begins to grow. Psalms 32, 11 says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous one, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. As Jesus said, those who are forgiven much, love much. Our problem is not that we have so little for God to forgive, but that we hide our sin so readily that we don't realize how much we have been forgiven. But the only way for God to forgive us is to be honest about how messed up we are on our side. God's forgiveness begins where blame shifting ends. Only when we own our sin as ours, not justifying it or covering up, can God begin to deal with it. As someone puts it, Cover your sin and God will expose it. Expose your sin and God will cover it. No wonder the psalmist expresses his love for God. He knows the shame, the terror of having his sin exposed. But he also knows the inexpressible joy of having their sin decisively dealt with. As Charles Virgin once said, when we think too lightly of sin, we think too lightly of the Saviour. He who has stood before his God, convicted and condemned with the rope around his neck, is the man to weep for joy when he is pardoned, to hate the evil which has been forgiven him, and to live to the honour of the Redeemer by whose blood he has been cleansed. The psalmist says that God's steadfast love surrounds him. This is the source of all true love for God. Assurance of the love of God for you produces love for God in you. And once we are truly forgiven, we find our love for God beginning to grow. The second thing that happens when we find forgiveness is that our compassion for others will grow as well. Psalm 32, 6 instead, For this reason, all who obey you should pray to you while they still can. When troubles rise like a flood, they will not reach them. The first seven verses describe the psalmist's experience of forgiveness. But at verse 6, the psalmist turns the corner and begins addressing others. He wants to help people struggling with sin, just as he has been helped. People who have experienced mercy speak to others with a tenderness and a gentleness that flows from their experience of forgiveness. Is that you? Do others feel safe in their weaknesses around you? If you are aware of God's grace in your life, they, your friends, will as well. 
you won't rush rush to judgment because you remember the judgment that rightly set over your own head the sign that you have experienced the mercy of god is your mercy towards others how vulnerable are you with other believers about your sin if you have experienced the joy of forgiveness you won't mind letting people see your faults because your happiness does not depend on maintaining some illusion that you are a perfect person do you receive criticism well if you had the experience of being deeply forgiven you won't mind when others point out your sin you are very aware of those sins yourself and you are not trying to cover them up behind a mask of your own goodness god's mercy not your stockpile of goodness is your hiding place you may even boast about your faults because that way people can see that there is a hiding place for their souls as well what makes forgiveness so life changing isn't simply that it makes us guilt free it's that forgiveness reconciles us back to god the world's best imitation of forgiveness can only say you may go but god's forgiveness says please come near the gospel is a message of reconciliation releasing us from our sin so that we can come close to god the source of all joy once again thank you for watching this video the lord jesus bless your week